I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Shaquille Muhammad, the founder and chairman of RNS Solutions and Antlia Blockchain. Shaquille, welcome to the show and thanks for being here. Thank you, Ashton, uh, for inviting me to this prestigious uh, YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. I'd love to kick off our talk just getting an overview of RNS Solutions as your development and the Antlia blockchain. RNS Solution, uh, if I just uh, reconstruct RNS, it's a reliable and secure solution. Uh, so we are software development risk, uh, firm. So we develop blockchain related software. Mm -hmm. But when we see blockchain, we say the block uh, or the software that should be more secure. Mm -hmm. But I, we believe the block uh, software and the block blockchain they should be reliable and then secure. So that's how we come up with the name of our mm -hmm. RNS solution back in 2017. Uh, we have done over 40 plus blockchain related projects. We developed uh, public blockchain. We have developed cryptocurrency uh, exchanges some apps, wallets, mm -hmm. uh, dApps, and we, we we are involved with the fintech uh, uh, application as well for the international banks. For example, mm -hmm. we are working with International Islamic Development Bank. Mm -hmm. That is a common uh, bank for all that Islamic wealth uh, related uh, uh, Islamic countries. Those have some wealth management uh, related things. Mm -hmm. So th this is our NS solution. So RNS Solution basically uh, is in different country, but main headquarters is in uh, Pakistan. Okay. So uh, because uh, in Pakistan, the population is higher and mm -hmm. the developers are pretty good, we believe. Yeah. Uh, if you go in uh, outsourcing community, they are uh, in top three countries mm -hmm. uh, mm. uh, for outsourcing because there's not big companies like Facebook, Google, those have their headquarters there, like in India they have, mm -hmm. and they are sucking up the talent. But in Pakistan, we are the Facebook and the Google. Those are providing outsource software. So That's that is our solution. That's very interesting, Shaquille. And what I really like about that is that you've worked on 40 plus different blockchain protocols and you get a, a deep understanding of the benefits, but also the limitations of each of the protocols. And with that, now your team is going in-house and, and developing Antlia blockchain solutions really to solve all of those problems that you've experienced throughout developing on all of these other platforms. So I think that's super cool. So if you could just explain a little bit more about you know, Antlia blockchain, uh, what makes it unique and, and how you came to start building that, that would be great. So uh, Antlia is uh, uh, part of Cosmos uh, network uh, chains community. So the Cosmos uh, philosophy is uh, there will not be one or two public blockchain. There will be multiple. There mm -hmm. is no like global language as uh, it is in the world and there is no global system or no global database where we are putting out. Uh, the, the blockchains are also similar like localized blockchain for the need and the purpose and for the in specific industry. Mm -hmm. So uh, Anthony is also public blockchain. So we are also one of the not uh, we, we are a little bit more generalized than the application specific blockchain. Our ultimate goal have to be um, uh, interoperable blockchain and scalable for uh, data and asset sharing seamlessly. Okay. How data and asset sharing? For example, there is a Ashton coin, there is a Shaquille coin, and we are two different ecosystem, mm -hmm. and they are not listed directly, and they are different chains. For example, mm -hmm. the framework is different. One is on Ethereum, one is uh, on, for example, Antlia and how we can swap those token or the data between. Because right now, we, when we talk about blockchain, we talk about only data uh, mm -hmm. assets. We are not talking about the data sharing uh, in coming days. So, uh, so that, that is the ultimate goal of uh, Anthelia. And as I said, uh, Anthelia is uh, interoperable. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. we are following the uh, interoperability, like the local interoperability. Like, uh, you, for example, you have a Pol Polish language. I have, for example, Urdu language, and mm -hmm. we want to communicate. There is 
uh, this is local uh, interoperability. But uh -huh. if we put some uh, in between some language, that's a global language, and then that's a global interoperability English is providing us. Uh -huh. So we believe um, for the data and for the asset sharing, there will be local interoperability instead of the global interoperability. And yeah, that, yeah. that's a, in a nutshell what is Anthelia project. Mm -hmm. I like that because right now there is a nice standard with Ethereum having the ERC20 protocol and the tokens are interoperable, but really even Bitcoin doesn't work with that protocol. You have to integrate it in using these side measures and same with all of the other blockchains. And now with this decentralized finance movement, it's all turning into decentralized swapping and not using a, a third party to, to swap coins. And it, you can't really have that cross blockchain swap uh, if if unless you're using a third party which sort of defeats the purpose of a decentralized movement so i think focusing on the interoperability uh is is definitely key um and another part i want to focus on as well is uh the security of the platform you know at, as these blockchains grow also the need for security needs to grow as well because there's more value locked inside there you know in terms of growing the platform from the beginning, obviously you want to have a strong foundation so you don't have a giant tower with a weak foundation. Can you talk about how you approached that as you were developing Antlia from the beginning? Yeah, so uh, um, uh, we prefer safety over liveness uh, in terms of our chain. And uh, if there is like blockage in the network, so we will prefer uh, safety as uh, mm -hmm. following uh, with the um, uh, cosmos uh, uh, tradition uh, for the security we are providing bonded proof of stake uh, mm -hmm. from the validator uh, so it's a basically practical Byzantine fault tolerance consensus engine and on top of it the validator are providing security but uh, the tendermint have one challenge that is like centralization for centralization we uh, to make it more decentralized we m made it rollover proof of stake or you mm. can say rollover bonded proof of stake. So we just remove bonded to not make confusion uh, about our consensus engine. So this rollover proof of stake, what does it do? If you have like 100 uh, validator out of 100, only 75 will uh, participate for the consensus okay. uh, randomly. So mm -hmm. and after five blocks, not on every block. So otherwise, your scalability will go down. If, yeah. Uh, you will go for consensus every uh, second. So this is how we deal with the security uh, through bonded proof of stake uh, through validators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really interesting dilemma where you need to focus on the scalability, but also the decentralization and also the security and the interoperability. There's all these moving parts, right? Um, and I, I think that you're, you're, from what it looks like, your team's doing a good job at balancing those acts. Um, so. That's great. And and also I want to add into the conversation about the ANA, you know, Antlia cryptocurrency, how that works in with the core ecosystem, provides value and you know drives value to the users of the community and the ecosystem. Can you touch on the coin as well? Oh yeah, sure. Uh blockchain without coin is like a body without blood. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this will be uh I met one Nobel laureate back in 2013, I believe, uh, in the city where I am living uh, in Dejan. Uh, so he actually developed one uh, clock. And I asked him, like, There's, why you got like Nobel Prize because of this clock? What, does, what is the specialty of that uh, uh -huh. <laughs> clock? What is the use of actually that clock? It was like private session when mm, in networking party. So he said, actually, I don't know exactly the application mm -hmm. of my clock. This clock will be useful after 50 years. Mm. After 50 years. Yeah. And, um, then he explained me when we will be traveling in Cosmos uh, through different stars, then there will uh, little error will be also uh, challenging. So error propagation will uh, make a bigger deal and the accurate time. Uh -huh. That time will be a very important thing. The same way, uh, right now, if we see uh, these um, uh, these coins ecosystem, we see for right now, 
it's not for mm-hmm. right now yeah I give people example when you are autonomous car if mm-hmm. you see every day how the uh, auto industry is changing uh so uh, you see they they have they have to um, move uh, independently maybe i will be sending my car my car might be entry a car uh, can you come here i am waiting here and can you come here after park because some time may be parking may be expensive where i am mm-hmm. and i will send it to some nearby place uh, so that car needs some charging how they will be charging auto, auto, like there is no person now mm-hmm. we have gasoline station and we fill up and when there will be autonomous cars and autonomous charging and the autonomous uh, ecosystem for trading uh, uh, money or um, buying and selling yeah so that's how coin will play role in coming days so entry a coin uh, in entry a we have a coin called ana coin and that will be the blood of uh, the Uh, economy of the whole blockchain mm-hmm. uh, we are launching not only with the blockchain initially our blockchain uh, initially we will be taking a uh, validator for the testnet and then we mm-hmm. are launching our two exchanges the first exchange will be centralized why centralized uh, we still didn't solve in uh, defi or decentralized world the problem of uh, providing fiat liquidity and because we are still living in the Wor- uh, world of fiat mostly mm-hmm. and some yeah. part we are living there on cryptocurrency world and in the upcoming world you can see in digital world it's uh, like 80s of internet yeah But definitely like mostly we were living in the real world and some um, some people were like on digital world um, and they were on internet so that's how we are starting with our centralized uh, mm-hmm. to provide fiat um, liquidity to uh, our token ecosystem mm-hmm. and then the rest will be decentralized uh, apps decentralized aggregator uh, decentralized aggregator for the asset sharing for mm-hmm. uh, when i called it asset sharing uh, that's not only the coins Mm-hmm. and that's also our data um maybe asset maybe some crypto kitties kind of things mm. that will be the assets the, yep the asset might be the real estate asset mm-hmm. so that kind of uh, in, intro, uh interoperable uh, aggregator to provide um trading aggregator and then the chain we will be uh, launching together Great. Well, you know what? I think that's a great approach. And Charles Hoskinson, when he was on the show, he had a similar, uh, you know, ideology where you really, it's it's a lot harder to get a really strong project off the ground when it's fully, you know, community run and, and decentralized. And, and starting with a little bit of centralization to help build the momentum and then being able to release it to the community, I think it is a good approach. Um, so... it sounds like you know you sort of understand where you're going with that and you know we're running out of time Shaquille but um uh, I want to hear about the future of Antlion RNS moving forward can you talk about what are the next upcoming milestones that the community can look forward to yeah so we will be more active right now uh the last year we did uh olympia blockchain olympiad in pakistan there were uh, different university collaborated with us mm-hmm. and we made uh f- five people group to participate in our olympiad and they they can be divided projects in smaller phases so they can learn so uh, i'm very happy one of uh, participant in olympiad they joined our in a solution for the permanent position mm-hmm. uh and uh, right now we are collaborating uh with different universities i am a part of a uh, committee for uh, government of pakistan for looking think future for the blockchain so mm-hmm. antlia will be there uh, r and d we we will not contain only to the antlia but we will open yeah. up for mm-hmm. all other chains but yep. antlia will be one of the major force for r and d uh, project different university students can participate and they can get benefit of uh, doing r and d work on antlia uh that is moving part another is we were not doing more much uh kind of marketing because we were not doing kind of ico 
Mm-hmm. So we had our own funds. How usually people ask me, Shikil, how do you run your business? Do you have a funding? Do you receive funding from somewhere? Mm-hmm. I told them it's like a business approach are different. Usually, people some people see like the fund getting funding and then doing something, and mm-hmm. some people are like, okay, I will do something. I mm-hmm. learn doing. uh making money and then making something uh-huh. so we made money by developing software and then we develop a uh, software as you mentioned charles askenson he is one of great guy he uh-huh. m- made some money and then he is doing a very very exciting project i uh-huh. love this he's one of the blockchain guy that i uh, fascinate i love him and he knows that um and he's great guy and he has the same philosophy like uh, he's using his own money mm-hmm. to build some the sentiments are different here yeah when you are taking the investor's money and you are uh, building something the sentiments are different mm-hmm. but when we see how to do marketing the crowd funding is one of the solution you have to do little bit crowd funding mm-hmm. to get marketing to get users mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. your uh, ecosystem so for for that reason we ha- we are going to be uh, do some crowd funding to get users okay okay it will be very very limited uh, this is what we are looking uh, in future and we will be doing more marketing so the marketing basically many people say ico is bad ico were bad mm-hmm. yeah there were bad elements we developed many icos we had done dozens of icos mm-hmm. platform for other clients and we see some were totally they even didn't know what is blockchain why they are in crypto space yeah. and they built those icos platform but if you see for the marketing purpose mm-hmm. this is the beauty of uh, ico and this will remain there we are not going to do ico we will be doing everything very legalized if not like uh, legalized in gray areas Mm-hmm. but not going on the black side of uh, the world no so uh, this is a future and that's how we started uh, marketing uh, this uh, this month exactly mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. still our marketing team is not active they will be active from next week and the development team uh, we revamped our website it was just a placeholder before mm-hmm. uh, the most active thing was our gitlab uh, mm-hmm. now we and um, Uh, GitHub is also a little bit code is there, but it yeah. will be also active uh, right now. You can see from last month onward, it will be very active. Mm-hmm. So this is what we are doing. A lot of collaboration. Sorry, a lot of collaboration di- with different universities for R and D with the governments. Uh, we want to open up our chain for the adoption. Um, they they might do some pilot projects for CBDC. and uh, mm-hmm. some marketing stuff and later on for investment to get some uh, users on our chain and open up for testnet or mainnet very exciting shakil sounds like you have a lot of partnerships in the works and there's a lot going on um so all the best moving forward with antlia and with rns solutions and i'll leave the links to all of your platforms in the description box below for the viewers as well and thanks so much for the time let's follow up in the near future Thank you so much Ashton for this time uh lovely to talk to you it's amazing your um uh, channel is amazing keep doing a uh, good job for the adoption thank you